there you go. My alarm even went off. I'll call a meeting to order. This is the uh, October 6th uh, Yellow Springs Village Council meeting. We're starting early at 6 o'clock for a budget hearing. And um, uh, will you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow? Here. Asplund? Here. Sims? Here. Ouch? Here. McQueen? Here. Also present um, is Interim Chief of Police David Hale, Sergeant Naomi Penrod, Superintendent of Streets, Parks, and Sewers, and lots of other Everything. things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Finance Director Melissa Benzan. And you. oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't write you down, so I'm like, well, surely I won't forget the village manager. And you look at your headaches. It's okay, my head's not swollen. <laughs> Okay, well, we're starting out the budget session. Um, this will will have, I think, three or four special budget meetings starting at 6 o'clock. This is the first one. We usually start out with the general fund, um, which is um, basically the largest pot of money that we provide most of the village services um, that you're accustomed to other than um, enterprise funds, other than utilities. So. Um, Melissa, or who is Melissa going to be presenting? Is Patty going to be presenting Melissa? Melissa? So we've, we have a budget. We've had it for actually a couple of weeks to, to review. And um, I'll just turn it over to Melissa. Okay, so I feel a lot better this time around because last time I did this, I think I had a month on the job. So <laughs> I was trying to get acclimated while trying to do a good job of presenting the budget and familiarizing myself with everything. So this time around, I have that. Um, familiarity and I feel a whole lot better about this so this should go pretty smoothly um what I did was there was I think one small revision which was in the packet for Friday and it was something that uh, Patty and I went over with the village manager so it was or the assistant village manager position so there was just a small tweak um, I did add some notations out to the side which I think would be helpful so hopefully that was um, that was good reference for you all to kind of see, you know, some of those notations and what some of those expenditures and revenues were. So I think that what I'm going to do, is, since everybody's kind of had time to look at this and it's been out online since Friday, I'm just going to go over and point out some generalizations about the whole thing. And then if you all want to um, go into specific detail about anything, we can do that. I did hand out um, an expanded version of the revenues. It's in black and white. Um, I put it on your table just right before we started. Just because I know that some people like to see some of those. Uh, Judy, I didn't give you one, but I do have an extra one. Some people are very curious about the, the revenues, and I should have probably expanded them out in the packet, and I did not do that. It was kind of an afterthought, so I apologize for that. I didn't do that last time, though, so there's one, and then there's an extra in case anybody would like to see it. Okay, so I'm going to start with the fund balances. Well, the fund balance, I should say. I do have another handout, which is very small. But it's going to show the fund balances. Actually, if I could keep one of those, Mary, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, it's the... Are there copies for the people? The um, I did have some extras, yeah. Let me find. I've got so many papers in my hands right now. Okay, here we go. When I when I put together the 2014 budget that was approved by council, we had projected um, what we had done first was, if you recall, we did the operations piece of it, and then we did the capital piece of it. And so the operations piece was done in one appropriation, which was our original one, and then we came back and we visited the capital. And then we did a supplemental appropriation that reflected those capital projects that were approved. So with all of those things together, the 2014 budget was projected to go into a deficit situation of $793,807. I'm happy to say that as it stands at the end of August, trying to project out for the rest of the year, our deficit is planned out to be about, or projected out to be 40% less, or about 320,000. So that's that's good news, is we're spending a little bit less and we're bringing in a little bit more than what we had anticipated. So I'm gonna kinda go through this. So of that $793,000 deficit, out of the general fund, it included um, two capital projects. One was the 25,000 that was allotted for the council chambers upgrade 
and then there was another 25,000 for the um, first floor renovations um, downstairs, which included the utility office. So those were the only two capital things that the general fund was directly supporting. However, there were um, some increased transfers that were going to support um, some of the uh, special revenue funds, capital projects, and operations as well. So that was, the majority of that was streets and parks. So we went through and um, there was some more money allocated for streets and parks for some capital projects. So that increased those transfers as well. So that was, that was included in that calculation. And then there was a large transfer that needed to go out to the water fund because of the filter rebuild as well as some engineering and design support for the um, loop completion in the bottleneck. So that was included in there as well. It was kind of um, unexpected at the beginning of the year and the beginning of the budget talks. So we do have a projected deficit that's 40% less. So approximately $320,000 is where I see the deficit being for the general fund at the end of 2014. And this is due to a number of factors. Um, there's about $223,000 worth of additional revenues that were not predicted. I did take a conservative approach and property taxes were $14,000 higher than predicted. So that's good. The income tax, however, is the most notable of the revenue uh, sources that was going to be additional or higher than predicted and it's it's on track to be about two hundred thousand dollars higher than predicted so that's great news and our state and local government tax was slightly miscalculated i was in, in trying to get familiar with how things come in um, some things come in once a year some things come in twice a year some things come in monthly some <coughs> things come in weekly it's it's just kind of one of those things that I had to familiarize myself with. The local government, I kind of figured it half of what actually happened. So that was just basically a rookie mistake. And um, trying to figure out when those things are timed out was you know, something that just came with experience because I was unsure of that. So that was uh, $53,000 higher than what I had figured just because of that additional money coming in in this later part of the year. So. Some of the offset of those higher revenues, because if you add all that up, obviously that's you know not 223,000. Because some of those areas were a little bit less than what was expected. Um, the fines, costs, forfeitures, and permit line um, is on track to be about 44% lower, which is mostly the mayor's court revenue. If you look out to the side um, on the the roll up, it's got that notation. But that's basically what feeds that line. There are some other small things that we get from the municipal court and others, but the bulk of that is the mayor's court. So that's on track to do a little bit, um, a little bit lower than what we've expected. Our miscellaneous receipts is on track to be about 21% lower. What goes into that is rent that we get from Verizon and a company called SBA that um, gives us whole rental money every month. <laughs> Um, some of it's quarterly um, refunds that we get from like amp landfill gas sales has always flooded into the general fund that's just how it's been set up prior to my arrival so mm -hmm. that comes in there that's been a little bit lower and then the uh, health insurance the employee share from the anthem portion I figured was going to be a little bit higher than what it was so that's going to be a little bit lower as well so some of the some of the funds were or some of the lines were doing a lot better and some of them were doing a little bit worse but in all the revenues are on track to do a lot better than what we had anticipated just because mostly that income tax that two hundred thousand dollar increase is huge so that's that's really helping mm -hmm. so, where did that come from um honestly i'm not a hundred percent sure to put my finger on it but from any one source, I guess I should say. Right. Um, we do get um, a report from Rita of the top 25 uh, taxpayers, and that includes organizations and individuals and such. And it seems that there's been a little bit of a shift in there. But if you want um, specifics on that, I'm more than happy to look into exactly where that could have came from. But there was a little bit of shifting, I noticed, in the top 25. And we get a monthly report on that. It might be good to look into after we're done with the budget process. It might be good to do a little bit more of a deep dive so we have a sense for on the income tax yeah, side just of it. Where it's where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, I think that would be useful information for us yep. to know. I can do that. And the income tax, it's just not something that I have, you know, my hand in daily because Rita right. handles all of it exactly. and we get the reports and I can, I mean, they do provide a wealth of information and if I ever have any specifics, 
I can email our contact and they're really on top of getting right back to me. I don't think it's a, something we need to do immediately, but like, you know, once you're kind of past this long, might be good to have a report on that sometime yeah, in the early part of next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No problem. Okay, so then when we look at the expenditure side. Could I have one question? Yeah. What is KWH? It's the kilowatt hour tax. And basically that is collected through the um, electric fund and it's trans transferred over <coughs> on a monthly basis to the general fund. So we do get a tax on the kilowatt hours that the electric fund receives from customers' utilities. And that comes directly to us via transfer on a, on a monthly basis. So the village taxes? Yes, we collect a kilowatt hour tax for our utility and it comes into the general fund. But then goes into the electric. No, it no, stays. no, it stays. Oh, yeah, it comes we from the electric oh. into the yeah. general. We oh. used to keep it in the general fund or in the electric fund, and um, but we decided with the large balance we had in the electric fund and the fact that we actually needed the money in the general fund and that actually most communities, all communities, I believe, get a kilowatt hour tax, um, and most communities actually do put it into their general fund. So we decided that we would do the same. It, we aren't required. Revenues we get from actually selling electricity, we're required to keep in the electric fund. We aren't required to keep the kilowatt hour tax in the electric fund. Is this something that the state says that a municipality can do? Can, can do, yes. Yes. I don't, I don't think that, I, is that a required tax? Yes. We, I mean, we, have to, we have to report all of it to the okay. state every single month. The kilowatt hours that are used in the tax that's I think collected. Asking, and everything. Is it a mandatory tax or is it one that we have chosen to collect? That's, I'm not really sure. I have to look into that to see the mystery right behind that. Okay. So I guess I've, I've kind of went over the revenues very generally, and you all have the specifics in front of you. So. If there's anything else that you guys have in terms of questions regarding the revenues at this point, we can we can go over those. Um, Melissa, I did have, um, and I think I was communicating with you and Patty about the local government fund. Yes. And maybe I need to do a little bit of investigation myself, but um, we are getting a slight increase in the local government fund. Yes, it's um, two, two but point two percent or something. But other municipalities in Greene County. Beaver Creek, Xenia, and um, Fairborn. Fairborn are getting significant increases, significantly higher increases than we are, and I'd like to know why. Um, I, is that coming from the state or from, is it from the state? through the county? It's from it's the state, from the, the state, state local state. government okay. fund. So that I don't know if that's something that you can check on. Um, you know, I had, a, and, and, and yes, certainly they're getting more local government fund, but they're still getting a higher percentage. Higher percentage and increase. as far as I'm concerned, we have, the same level of service. We provide the same level of service. We we provide a lot of revenue for the state and for the county right. because of our um, high sale because of our sales tax because of the sales tax we generate from our shops and our restaurants, the brewery. So I feel like we are a community, and and because of that, our expenses are higher. Law enforcement, sidewalks, street maintenance, those kinds of things. So I think we deserve I a, a similar increase in the local government fund. Is that uh, local government tangible? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder, could the Ohio Municipal League look into that for us? Is that? I don't know if the Municipal League could look into to that. Well, I'll do a little research on for us. I mean, I think we we'd probably use. I, yeah, I think we might be better off calling directly to maybe the, the state, the state. Mm -hmm. and, call and in trying to yeah, okay. call into the, um, the auditor's office and see what they say. I think a couple of communities... How it was determined. Right, and I think a couple of communities in Greene County actually saw a decrease, so they're actually getting less. So, so at least we're getting slightly more, but I feel like we deserve the same increases, the larger communities in Greene County. I'll definitely look into that. Okay, thanks. So do we have um, any other questions kind of about the revenues? We do have in the, in the state shared taxes and permits. If you notice, I mean, we went over this last, uh, last well, I guess it was this year, but um, for this year's budget that 
that has taken a significant dip, but that was a result of the estate taxes going away. So mm -hmm. they were really high in 13 and then dipped down and they're, yeah, not, that's and they're not gonna go back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like right. not. Unless we get some residuals, which could still occur, but I mean, as the days pass, the likelihood of that also decreases, so. Um, could you explain the cat tags? Do you, do we, I mean, I know we're not, your commercial activity tax. Oh. We don't, I know we don't. Tax on cats? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We don't get it. I know a lot of communities get cat tax. Do you, can you? I'm not familiar with that. Okay. No, I'm not familiar with it either, but I It's actually a tax that, that Kasich actually increased this year for some reason. Um, I would like to know why, you know, if some of our, it would be paid by industries, it would be paid by business, and I'd like to know if it's something that we should be collecting. And it's a line with, it's a line that exists, so it makes me wonder if at some point it was used and then just kind of dropped off. So I can also look back historically to see if we ever had received any of that in like the time frame that we did. So I'll look into that. We could have a cat tax. No, I was no. Our highest failure. Especially those loose ones. <laughs> Since we are on revenues, I, I guess I would like to make a note that you know at some point pretty soon we should probably be exploring the hotel tax. I was wondering about that, the and, bed tax. Yeah. 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 So just to have that, you know, maybe next month or something. I don't know. I had done a little bit of research on that and and couldn't quite pull together where the legislation. I have it. You have it. Okay. Cool. So we've got the legislation. Uh, I have someone else's legislation. Yeah, and I actually also got uh, a CD that's got sample legislation of all of that from the OML. So. I, have, I have Deerfield Township, Warren awesome. County. Cool. Cool. Melissa, did you say what, what under the uh, miscellaneous, the rent, you had a notation here that it includes a horizon, but something drops the rent? Well, the rent has just went down, and I have a letter that's down in my office, and now I can't remember exactly why, but there was, I can't remember if it was the SB, I think it was the SBA properties. We get a check from them. Um, I think it's monthly that it comes from them. One of them is monthly and one of them is quarterly. And one of them had dropped off, and I can't remember why, but they did give an explanation of that. But I don't remember if it was a service that, um, that had a contract with them that dropped off. I feel like that that was the reason why. But it did it did drop down a little bit this year, and we were notified of that in writing. So I do have a letter down there that I can I can look into and come back yeah, to you with that. Thirty thousand. And does that relate to the to the tower at the barn? Is that what you took, or is it this tower? I'm not sure where the tower is, but I know that I know that Verizon gives us money. <coughs> but it has to be but not at the farm. Yeah, yeah, I guess it does. So but but Verizon's been paying for the lease out here ever since we signed that agreement too. So, but and I don't know if that's a Verizon tower. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, it's not at the the one at the farm, is it, Jason? Nope. So anything else as it relates to running? Do you know anything about why the cable franchise dropped? In 2012, it was 45,000, then it dropped. It. Oh, um, it's protected. Yes. Well, yeah, we're on track to, based on what we've received every single month, that's what we're on track to do this year. So then I took the conservative approach and just figured in what I figured last year because if you look at what happened in 13, I kind of went off of that just because I was taking the conservative approach with that. I didn't want to assume that we were going to receive the extra $7,000 and then maybe it not come. So I was going off of 13, but we are on track. And I have been in communication um, with the cable franchise people, and they've told me that they expect for it to remain steady, but they told me the same thing last year and it went up. So I just tried to take the conservative approach with that one. We good with revenues then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. All right. So I'm going to kind of um, go over some of the highlights of the expenditures, and then we can kind of look at each of the departments. 
So with the expenditures, what happened um, in 2014 or what is projected to happen is there are there are 11 departments total within the general fund. And of those, council, administration, rental property, library, cable TV, HRC, planning and zoning, PD, and mediation are all on track to spend less than budgeted for the year. So that's that's good news. Um, we will need to keep a kind of a close eye on the PD just because of some of the changes that have occurred and what impact that may have on personnel costs. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that one. But other than that, everybody's on track to spend less than what they were allocated this year. So that's good. The mayor's court and the auditor are on track to spend more than budgeted this year. Um, the mayor's court has had some higher personnel costs um, in the auditor's department. There was some extra work in 20, doing the 2013 audit that wasn't really expected. They really had to go over quite a bit, but with the change in the finance director and all that, and me coming in at the end of the year, they had to do quite a bit of work, so it did result in some higher costs there. But luckily, um, well, I don't know if I should say luckily, everything that I've heard indicates that this is a good thing, that our audit is being contracted out for the next five years, and the auditors, or the, the CPA firm that I favored was actually the one that was selected. We did get input. We got to go over all of the proposals and, and the costs associated with all that. So the cost for the auditor's department, which is kind of strange that it's a department, but it's all of our auditing fees is wrapped up into that. They are gonna be less because the CPA firm that was selected was gonna be significantly less than the state. And from everything I've heard, it's a quality CPA firm. Okay. And this process is actually a lot simpler. Um, the state for the last several years has, has been allowing smaller municipalities the choices of either having the state select a, for a private firm to send in or the state doing your audit. Um, we had for, I think, th three budget cycles in Williamsburg, we had a private audit uh, firm come in that the state sent in. It cost us less. It was a streamlined process. It just worked out a lot better. And you said that would be for the next five years? Yes, it'll be 2014 to 2018. And we were actually packaged in the um, request for proposals with Cedarville as well. So Cedarville got contracted out right along with us. I don't know if they end up with the same firm, but I know that the firm that we got is fairly good. And I talked to a number of people that had them uh, do their audits and everybody was really happy with them. So I'm pretty So where is the, uh, you were talking about mayor's court and then you started talking about auditing. Yeah. Where is it, is it just, those are two separate things, so, right? Yeah, the, the those auditor. are the only two departments out of 11 that are on track to spend more than what they were budgeted okay. this year. Is, is, is there any way to explain why um, mayor's court revenues are significantly reduced in their expenses? Expenses are increased? I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I do know, I mean, the, the mayor's court, if, if you look at that, it's busted or broken out into, um, you know, their operations and their personnel costs. And so let, me, let me pull this out. So their operations, basically, I have the little savings worksheet, which kind of helps. Let's see. Okay, the Mayor's Court, their 2014 operating budget was $5,500. So if you take a look at their actual budget for 2014, their budget was, let's see, $59,000. So 95% of it is the personnel costs. Mm -hmm. And they have the, the full-time clerk. Um, she's 35 hours, um, so that's considered full-time with us and then the mayor's salary. So there are those two things. And that's the bulk of it. So it's it's wages and benefits, and then their operations costs are very minimal, $5,500 or so. I mean, this is this is very minimal, but what's there's there's a big jump in contractual services. Do you know what that is for them? Yeah, what the way that it was set up was the mayor's court, the money that they bring in every month turns around and goes right back out. Some of it is remitted to the general fund and some of it is remitted to the computer fund. And the computer fund, I, I'm not sure why it's set up that way. I, I believe it's a state mandate um, with the way that their revenues are dispersed. But the computer fund basically existed, to my understanding after speaking with June a number of times and trying to understand their budget, is 
that was supposed to support their record, or I don't know if it's really a records, but like their reporting system that they have, right. their software. Mm -hmm. And this year, they did not bring in enough to support that at all. All of the charges were going to that computer fund and it was actually carrying a negative fund balance. So I had to transfer that expense from the computer fund mm -hmm. to the mayor's court because they didn't have enough money to support it. So moving forward, their contractual services are gonna reflect their computer software um, annual support because the computer fund just can't handle it. Okay. So there is a jump in it because normally it would have been in that special revenue fund, but it just doesn't have enough money to support it. So it has to be paid and I can't have a negative fund balance. So I just transferred it, the expense to the actual Mayor's Court Department and not the computer fund. Okay. So that's kind of what happened there. Let's see. Okay, so the good news is most of the departments are going to spend less. You have a few that are going to spend a little bit more. And let's see. And the PD is the PD is actually on track to, to spend less as well. So that's that's a good thing. Um, so that's kind of the highlights of the expenditures, at least in 14. And then if we look at 15, I expect the revenues to stay steady. They've stayed pretty steady this year and increased in some areas. So I'm projecting it's probably going to stay the same based on the, the information I got back regarding the tax budget and everything that you know I've had to go over to prepare for that and what I've gotten back from the county. I'm, I'm assuming that everything's going to pretty much stay on track kind of as it has this year. I was conservative and not projecting any large increases. I didn't project another $200,000 increase for the income taxes or anything like that. I'm just keeping them pretty much steady. Um, again, taking the conservative approach. Um, the operating costs for 2015, what I did was I had went through kind of the budget processes. I sit down, I go through all of the, every single line item with every single supervisor. Everybody's okay with it. It goes before Patty. We kind of go over all of it. She kind of tweaks it as she sees fit, and then that's what you see before you. So it's went before the supervisors. Patty's taken a look at it. And Patty had requested everybody try to cut 3% out of their operating costs this year, and a lot of departments were really successful in that. There were a lot of savings that we were able to make. What we did was we extrapolated all of the personnel costs and what was left over is the operating costs. And a lot of people were able to cut 3% off of that this year. Council's budget did it, administration, auditor, but that was a reflection of the audit being contracted out, of course. Rental property, the library, HRC, and planning. So seven out of the 11 departments were able to meet that 3% and some of them doubled and tripled it. So a lot of those departments were able to, to really give some some cuts that were you know a lot more than what Patty even requested. Um, there were other departments that made cuts but they were less than three percent and that was the PD and mediation. They did cut but they didn't quite make the three percent so that's worth noting. There were two departments where the operations actually increased and that was the mayor's court and that was cable. So those that's kind of the broad overview of the expenditures and the departments and kind of what's occurred. So if you all have any specifics with any of the departments or want to go through each of the departments, we can kind of do that because you all have the condensed version, I have the expanded version. So if there's anything that you see that you'd like to go over, we can do that. It, it would be good to note on that, and it's, again, it's a small amount, but the increase in cable is because of the uh, Miller Fellow, and that money is actually coming back to the village. Most of that money is coming back to the village via the Miller Fellow um, exactly. grant. So um, even though it's an increase in their budget, a lot of it, a portion of it will be reimbursed. And we'll, we'll see that when we go into the special revenue funds too. I know like the Bryan Center Youth is another one of those. It looks like their budget went up you know, a bit, and it did because of their fundraising efforts. So that's another one that's kind of okay. one of those things where it did go up, but it's just compensating for the revenue that's coming that's additional. I have a question about uh, contractual services, both for council and for the administration. Mm -hmm. What is causing? I bet I can answer it's that. Not without actually, the council, it. it's not an increase of it projected; it's a decrease. But um, I just like to know what that is, and then um, we will 
for, um, well, and actually for administration is a decrease over the projected. I'd like to understand what's included. Um, where Kent had decided to put the money for the council chambers upgrade and the downstairs upgrade came out of that area. So that's right off the bat $25,000 less in 15 than what it would have been in 14. But I thought it was going to be um, related to something else. But actually, now that I look at it, that was actually and instead. That money hasn't been spent yet. Um, part of, well, part of the downstairs money has been spent. Yes. And part of it has been encumbered for the council chambers. What I did though, in the projection, I have the full amount coming out for the year. So I did take that into consideration in the projection because I knew it would likely come out this year. So I did include that in the projections. So th does that include legal? Is that one of the I was going to say legal yes. fees should also be in contractual services. It is. Same thing for the council. Yes, right. that's that's the council the largest driver. It's, it's um, divided up between the departments, but probably most of it is council. Most yes. of it would be either council or administration, yes. Yeah. Council is actually budgeted for 82500 and administration is budgeted for 40000 um, not out of the legal services line. No, no, services. not out of the legal, but I mean, oh, yes. Yes. Contractual yes, professional services, yes. Anything that we would need to contract out would come out of that one. I have a couple questions for you. Yeah. Uh, under admin 1003, on the personal services, you said includes uh, assistant uh, village manager, and it looks like an increase of about 40000 mm -hmm. And then also under um, planning and zoning, yes. it also says assistant village manager planner, and it increases about 90000 So I thought we were looking at the, the assistant to do both, or are we not, not doing that now? No, the assistant will do both. Um, the, the assistant salary will be divided between those two categories. And then the where it says planner, that's actually like a part-time code enforcement person. Oh, okay, so it's that, not it's, it's not, not a full-time planner. Okay. It's strictly a, a part-time code enforcement uh, nuisance abatement type person. Yeah, so there's two there's the two positions okay. that are coming out of planning. Where is that the planning? What, what under 1202 at the bottom of that page you're looking at okay now my next question is under um, public safety mm -hmm. we have 10 full-time and four part-time and one part-time support is that uh, is that 10 more than what we had last year 10 full-time no, 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 that's the total number right now. Yeah. Right now the police department has 10 full-time and four part-time officers and one part-time support and they have three full-time dispatchers and five part-time dispatchers. So that's what we have now. Yes. Okay. yes. Yep, that's current staffing. And that there's, there's no increased staffing figured in at all for 2015 either. It's just maintaining the current level of staffing and then taking into consideration anybody that's got step increases or anything like that. All of that's already figured in. Um, I, I would like to see uh, for the contractual services, the, how that gets broken down. I mean, what goes to legal, what, what is going to... Uh, oh, what, expense wise? Yeah, okay. Expense. For council or no, for administration and council? Just it, um, I bet that's the main place where you track the services. Well, also public safety. Well, yeah, IT contractual services. Be part of contractual services as well. Okay, let's see. Well, let's look at. I'll just kind of read off the lines that are included in that because some of those I can definitely give you more detail. But just to let you know, like all of the lines that are included in contractual services. Um, we've got rents and leases, we rent a copy machine, people have Which are portions of that. Um, this is councils, oh, yeah. M but most of these lines are in all of the budgets. Okay. Not all of them have money allocated, but most of them do. Um, professional services, insurance, 
Let's see, maintenance of equipment, postage, memberships. Let's see, any of the utilities that are paid. Maintenance of facility, printing, advertising, licenses or permits, hardware, software, support, and legal. The bulk of councils is, is legal. And professional services, there's 10,000 allocated for that. So between the two, that's 92 of it right there. And the rest of it's kind of divvied up between those smaller, the smaller line items. In administration, it's basically, I mean, it's all of those same things um, with the exception of the retainer that we pay Rita. We pay them every single month for their services to, to perform all of the income tax collections and dissemination of the revenues and everything, and that's 51000 for the, re the retainer for Rita to take care of all that stuff. So the other 100000 is just lots of little stuff? Professional services, there's 30,000, there's 40,000 for legal, there's 13,000 for hardware, software support. So, I mean, that's the bulk of that right there, just with those few line items. And then public safety. Let's see. Okay, so some, some of the explanation to the right, she's, she's got that in her notes. What I put on my notes on the first one of that. Their big one is hardware, software maintenance, vehicle, that was 10. Vehicle maintenance is 15,000. Um, Green Central 911 dispatch is 25 of that. So those, those things right there are coming pretty close. And the rest of them are $5,000 or less just broken out into the various smaller lines. So there's no, no legal services that are specific to public safety? They have $5,000 figured in. Um, they really don't spend a whole lot. In 2014, um, there were quite a bit of legal services. We only had $1,000 budgeted. And they've already spent, well, at the end of August, it was like 17000 But it's just the legal services is something that's super hard to try to predict because you don't know what's going to happen in a given year. No. And it's it's really hard. So I did budget 5000 towards it versus the 1000 But in the years prior to that, in 13, there was only 2600 spent, and in 12, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's really hard to budget the legal services in all of the areas because we just don't know. So those are the things that make up contractual services. It's quite quite a chunk in, in most of the budgets. And the only additional staff, I mean, there's the assistant village manager, which was figured in the 14, and we have some savings in this year from that because I think we figured it at five months. Right. So there are some savings there, and then the part-time planner. But other than that, there aren't any new staff that are being proposed in 2015. So does anybody have any questions about the specific departments? Because the last piece that we'll go over is the transfers and making sure everybody understands kind of where we're at with that and what they do and why we have them and those types of things. So is everybody okay on the expenditure side of it in the departments? I mean, I guess at some point we're going to look at are there things we want to cut or raise, but we're not doing that right now. But, um, I mean, I think, I think we need to hear the transfers. I think we need to get through the whole general fund. I mean, we've talked about a couple of things. I, you know, I think we're, it looks like we're going to have time. We can talk about transfers. I mean, if people have suggestions, we should hear from citizens um, while Melissa's here and can answer questions. We'll, so if we go over the transfers if we don't have any other specific questions, and then we'll open it up to the floor. Okay, so basically the transfers, are, exist to support a variety of other funds. First of all, um, the transfers that you do see for 2015 only include those that will support operations. That's staff and that's operating cost. So if we look at streets, streets receives very little money from the state. They get some motor vehicle license taxes that they get. They get some gasoline tax. It's, it's very little money. I think it's, it's, it's right around $100,000 that they get um, to support the entire department, which doesn't support the operations at all. So 
The rest of it has to come from a, a general fund transfer. So I actually had to have all of the special revenue funds that were affected by transfers budgets completely done prior to this presentation. So these will be accurate and match up with what you will see the next meeting in terms of um, the, the revenue as a result of those transfers that's coming in. So Streets is going to receive 457000 uh, 992 and that's again just to support operations and uh, the personnel costs that's no extra capital or anything um, and just the same with all the budgets we are just doing just operations at this point and we'll talk about capital kind of later um, the parks they receive a transfer of 291,000 parks received some revenue from um, admissions from the pool sale of concessions rent from the Bryan Center, um, gymnasium, things like that. It's very small. But then again, the, the park staff is small as well, so they don't receive as much. Um, so the, the staff is a little bit smaller and the services are a little bit smaller too. Where are the revenues shown um, for the for golf park and the Bryan Center? Those will be in the next presentation when we go over all the special revenue funds. Oh, okay. So, you'll so they see are in that. this general fund budget? Uh, no. Okay. Just, just the okay. transfers have to be included. And what I did is the transfers will basically zero out the budgets every year. That's okay. the way that I've done right. it. Okay. I figure out what it's going to cost, what money I know is going to come in, and then the rest of it is supplemented by the general fund transfer so it just zeroes it out and then um, we've got the green space fund which will probably be a point of discussion I put the same that was allocated last year which is 25,000 after talking with Patty and the police pension this is kind of an interesting one the way that it's set up the police department pension line in the actual department only supports the part-time officers and the dispatchers because they um, their pensions are um, PERS so that comes out of the actual department all of the full-time police officers are Ohio police and fire pension and so that comes out of the police pension fund so we do a transfer to support the pension for that fund. They receive a little bit of revenue. Again, I think it's from like the motor vehicle licenses and some other small things. And then we just offset that with the transfer. So it, it does come out of a different fund is the way that it's set up. We've got the widow's fund, um, $1,500, which is the annual support. And then we do have a transfer to the um, electric fund for the Bryan Center bond repayment. So those are the transfers. And again, the streets and the parks, that's to support operations. And then the police pension supports operations as well. Um, the only other things that are kind of extra, so to speak, are the green space and the widow's fund. And then the Bryan Center payment is actually locked in loan. Well, and the bond repayment. And when are we done with that? I think it's another three years. It's, I think it's three. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with that. Three, I think it uh, was four, and the first one was last year. Okay, so this, this, one this year, and then two more. Okay. Yeah, 15, 16, and 17. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when you say that streets is just operations, so that doesn't include any like ceiling or any of those kinds of things? Mm, no, the paving, this is, I, I feel like this always comes up because I guess the paving may have used to be in the capital budget, but it's actually coming out of their professional services line. So the paving budget is included in the operations. That is not capital <coughs> separated out. And what's that amount? Annually? I think that there was 200 um, allocated this year, but that'll be in the budget next next meeting. But I think off the top of my head, it was 200. What Jason's would be smaller. considered capital expense? If they want a new dump truck, if they need new mowers, those kinds of things, um, if they need a new vehicle of any type, um, th those are the typical things that have came out of the streets and the parks capital budgets. So with that being said, if you take a look down at the very last page, bottom right corner, yes. with what I have figured, it's a $305,000 deficit with operations. That's no extras um, at all this year. So, well, in 15, I should say. It doesn't include capital projects at all. No. But there are no capital projects included in that. It's basically personnel and buying our pens and our pencils and all of the necessities. So with that being said, 
Council, um, questions from Council for Melissa, and I'll open it to the floor for citizen comment. Well, I, I guess I, I have a process question as much as anything else. As we look at a budget like this, I assume we're going to be looking, or I guess I would say I would want to look to Melissa and Patty for suggestions on increases. Okay. So I, I I think they've done it. Oh, you've done it. I, yeah. Now up to us. Yeah. I mean, when when we started the budget process, uh, we have we have regular staff meetings, and and I ask all the staff just off the top to um, to cut budgets by three percent as a as a starting point. And uh, even though everybody was like, they did. It. Um, everybody, when, when they met with Melissa, um, said, okay, this is, I, I can cut this here and I can change this procedure and do this. And so everybody did that part. And then when Melissa and I went through, um, we were, I, we kind of did it a little more. <laughs> and I, I mean, this is actually, when we get to the enterprise funds, I, there's a lot of work to be done on, on all of the budgets. and. Um, I mean, the only truly healthy fund we have right now is electric. And as I announced to council uh, a couple of meetings ago, uh, we know that um, DPNL has has filed to terminate the contracts, and we're protesting that through AMP. And so we don't know what's going to happen with electric rates. Um, so you know, at this point, um, we're spending less. Um, but we're still in deficit spending. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot to be done. And the other thing that I ask all of the staff to do when they came up with their capital project lists um, was to prioritize them based on need and um, to write a darn good justification uh, as to why you're asking for any capital project. Um, so, we're doing the best that we can to, to cut this. You know, we we have to find a way to increase the revenues. That's the big thing. I mean, it, that's what it comes down to, and that's part of what I'm hoping that the assistant village manager can help with because they'll be spending more time on the economic development portion of that, and, and hopefully increasing the revenue as opposed to uh, you know. Just trying to cut the expenses, right? So, and I mean, you heard Patty say that there, or Melissa, one of the two. There is no increased staffing here except for what we've authorized: the assistant village manager and, and a part-time planner. Um, and um, you know, so so there's very little room. There's very little wiggle room. You know, you know, the idea of asking any of our departments to decrease staff, that's what we would potentially be looking at, is looking at decreasing staff, um, cutting out programs. I mean, we're potentially in the position we were um, when I first came on council, and that's looking at, at major cuts. I mean, you know, cutting programs, cutting departments, cutting things like the pool. I mean, that's, that's, that's the position we're in, because, you know, it's, it's, um, I, I don't. I don't think Jason would think he could lose any of his his staff. I, I just we're we're thin as it is, I and mean, I think everybody acknowledges we're thin. Uh, so what are we staff wise? Well, I, I see. I see two. The levy. <laughs> yeah. I, I see two two potential areas for savings. And the pool is is a losing proposition, but we don't want to completely close the pool. That said, we need to look to reduce the loss and um, Judy is going to help me with that because Judy is a certified pool manager so over the winter Judy and I are going to sit down and try to come up with a plan that allows us to keep the pool open but at a lesser cost so that's one thing um, the other thing that I think that council may want to reconsider and I know this has been um, a topic of discussion because I have had a couple of council members ask me about it is um, the ordinance to do the sidewalks. Um, again, it's a minimal savings. I think Jason has $50,000 <coughs> in his budget, 
uh, to do sidewalk repair throughout the village every year. And to be honest with you, $50,000 is not going to repair a whole lot of sidewalks. And um, I, while I hate to say it, I don't think that the village can, can actually maintain the sidewalks in the proper way. There are other options to doing it. Um, you can ask the homeowners to be responsible for it. You can have the village do it, but assess it to the property taxes on a footage front basis. Uh, you know, it, it, and there are a lot of different ways to do it. So that may be something that council wants to look at. Um, but we're, we're just cutting that at the edges. Right, but, and, but and we need we need council needs to look at the the true issue is, is that we're not bringing in enough revenue right. to to provide the services that the community expects. Right. So if the community is going to continue to expect these services, we're going to have to raise uh, taxes or whatever to cover cover the services or they come back and tell us no cut. But you know, we we since since I've been on council we we've been in in, in you know, Right. And, well it, we'll yeah and, to, you know. and I agree with I agree with you. We we have to find a permanent resolution. You know, what we did this year with the three percent cut and, and the things I've mentioned, I mean they're kind of like Mary and your contractual services line. The reason it's so big is because there are a lot of little things that go into it. So if you can find a lot of little savings, they may add up to something. But essentially, you are right, Jerry. They're not going to solve the entire deficit spending problem. Right. Because you're not even to capital improvement right. yet. Right. And, so. and the, the, the levy, um, the, we're, we're going to be talking about the levy very soon. Because we're, we're going to, that levy is going to be on the ballot in 2015. So um, that is something we're going to look at. Um, it, that money is essentially stagnant. I mean, it's great money. It is what has pulled us out of um, pulled us out of the deficit we were in. But the way that tax is, is assessed and collected, it remains stagnant. I mean, what seven hundred and fifty thousand or eight? I don't know how much it is. But I mean, you put the tax budget together, and it's stagnant. And and the way the the state changed the rollback, the homestead exemption. <coughs> Um, we're going to want to maintain that levy exactly as it is right now because um, if we change it at all, we, we lose that homestead exemption and our folks who are, the state pays the homestead exemption now, they would have to pay it themselves. So what we can consider is keeping, keeping the tax that we have now, you know, exactly as it is so we don't affect that homestead exemption. But look at you know do we add another another percentage? That's what most people are doing is they're keeping an existing tax that they have so they don't impact the homestead exemption, and then they're adding a percentage. I mean we could we could look to say the levy we, the way we've been doing the levy it's been a general fund levy. We haven't said it's going. Most communities do a police levy and they do a streets levy and they do a bridge levy. Parks. We parks and rec levy. We have chosen to have a general fund levy because we feel like all of these services are equally important. Um, we could choose to maybe do an additional capital projects levy, a much smaller, but do a capital projects levy or do a sidewalk levy or something. And th those, are, those are things we could do. With income tax, um, we could look at, at reducing the reciprocal um, income tax. Right now, um, if citizens work in Dayton, they're not paying any any tax does. If they're working outside of Yellow Springs and the tax rate is 1.5 percent, they're not paying any Yellow Springs tax. They're paying it all to the municipality they work in. A lot of communities are starting to reduce that. It's called reciprocal reciprocity. A lot of communities are starting to reduce that so that they will get some percentage of that. Most of them offer some level of reciprocity um, so that somebody's not paying three or four percent income tax. Um, but that's that's an option. I mean, that's this is exactly what we did in, in 2005, 2006 when I was first elected to council. I mean, we sat down. We had a primer on tax revenue sources um, and and our services, and we went through it. You know, we didn't do it in, in relation to a budget. We did it as just more of a primer on 
where we get revenues and, and where our expenses are going. So um, I feel like you know we're we're at the point where we're going to have to do that. Um, How did you did you have a do we just have special meetings of council to do that at? Or I think so. I think so. And and that was essentially what led us to the decision for the property tax, and and which was great. Unfortunately, you know, as I said, that tax is is stagnant, but everything is increasing. All of our expenses are increasing, and then the hit we took from the local government fund, the state tax. I mean, estate tax alone. If we had a state tax, we would be fine. You know, I mean, just think of what we've lost in the past two years. Um, that is essentially, you know, that's the difference. Yeah. So um, somebody's got it. You know, we've got to make it up somewhere. You know, in case it doesn't seem to want to let go of all that money he's collecting. Right, because it, a lot of that, um, the, the local government funds, if you've explained it, that it, it is effectively our, our sales tax. That's right. right. And then they just give us back a portion of our right, sales yeah, tax. Yeah. And they cut the portion that they're giving back to us. So, um, I mean, I think, I, I, I you know, I, we've got, I mean, we can go a little bit over. Um, uh, I mean, what do we want to do? We've only got five minutes, ten minutes if we want to stretch it. We just hear, hear from citizens. Because yeah, so. we will have, I mean, this is obviously not going to be the only time we discuss the general fund. So, um, any questions, comments from citizens? Matt, come on, Chris, please. Um, the, the, so one of the things that we didn't talk about with Mayor's Court, I think should be um, taken into account is it also is a source of revenue, although it doesn't necessarily even out um, it doesn't, no, no, especially not this, this uh, past year, right, or the year before, but if you look back a couple of years, it really costs about the same as departments like, you know, mediation. So, that's something to look at. Um, the other thing that I was curious about is we have, you know, 10 full-time officers, four part-time officers, one part-time support, three full-time, and five part-time dispatchers. Um, how much of our budget this year um, with, with um, personnel costs for the police department uh, is higher than it would be if we weren't doing tons of overtime due to um, staff shortages and these kinds of things? I think that's something we should be looking at. Um, the other thing is a great way to save money on the police department would be taking ourselves off the task force. It's an extra salary that is completely unnecessary. And I think the community feels pretty strongly uh, that we shouldn't be involved in it at this point. So, yeah. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Matt, Matt Carson, I'm going to ask you to give your name. Um, any other comments, questions? Jason, I'm sure, do you have anything to say? No. <laughs> I think that the last thing that Melissa didn't really go over, but it's, it's in your you should have it is this is the savings that we went when we went through the budget these are the departmental savings that um, everybody was able to uh, to cut before the budget came to council so so you, you have that as a reference as to where we would have started and where we ended up okay. melissa would you explain um what we're going to be talking about at the um october 20th meeting okay. six o'clock again yeah that's I mean, the general fund is the smaller of the discussions because we are going to, hopefully, we can pack it all into one, but we're going to go over the special revenue funds first, which is the bulk of that is going to be streets and parks. And there are some other, like, smaller ones, but streets and parks is the bulk of that one. And then we're going to go through the three enterprise funds, which, as Patty had indicated, they're going to take some, they're going to take some work. I'm just going to give you a heads up on that. So. Um, we're going to go over that, and then we'll go over the capital projects list. So it was my intention to present all the operational costs first so you can see directly how that affects everything, and then you'll go through and take a look at the capital projects and figure out and prioritize from there where you want to go and how that will affect the budgets further. So we'll do special revenue funds, we'll do enterprise funds, and then we'll do the capital at the end. So if we have to if we have to move anything, I'd say the capital discussion could probably be moved if time doesn't allow us to go over that. But 
I'll kind of do the same thing. I'll highlight kind of what's happened in 2014 and kind of what's going to happen or what's projected to happen in 2015, much of the same way, if that's okay with everybody. And then just to review the res, so that will be October 20th at 6 o'clock. Then end of our, our November meeting, what what is on the agenda? Is that that's another six o'clock meeting? Yeah, we were just going to go over everything as a whole. If anybody, that would be the time I would think, since time hasn't really permitted in this session as well as what I'm expecting in the next session. That'll be kind of the time where everybody kind of looks into everything, and kind of makes a game plan as to what changes might need to be made um, for the 2015 budget, so that. I can prepare those before the ordinance comes before you. Okay. Any questions, comments from council? Was everybody okay on the format and everything like that and the way that it was presented this time? And you and you will will you include um, uh, the 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 uh, fund balances when you? Yep, I'll do it the, the exact same okay. way. Kind right. of what what's going to happen in fourteen and what I think may happen in fifteen as the budget stands. It's in front of you. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Thanks, staff that was here for that. Thank you a lot, Melissa. Mm -hmm. um, so the meeting has been called to order. Um, it's already been called to order. It's already taken um, uh, role. So we'll now go into regular session. Um, do we want to start out with the, uh, yeah, with, so we're going to swear in. We have our, uh, uh, interim uh, chief of police here, and Patty will be swearing him in. This is for the second time. Yes. Yeah. This is the ceremonial swearing in. Yeah. Raise your right hand. I state your name. I, David S. Hale. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And will obey the laws. And will obey the laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. That I will in all respects. That I will in all respect, aspects. Observe the provisions. Observe the provisions. Of the charter and ordinances. Of the charter and ordinances. Of the village of Yellow Springs. Of the village of Yellow Springs. And will faithfully discharge the duties. And will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office of temporary chief of police. Of the office of temporary chief of police. Yeah, do you want to introduce yeah. Dave Stanton? Yeah, this is uh, Dave Hale. Um, Dave agreed to be our interim chief of police. He retired as a major from Montgomery County SO in May. In the April, yes. The sheriff's um, office. Yeah, that's what I saw. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just um, realized we use acronyms that yeah. confuses people. Um, <laughs> would you like to say anything or say anything else about yourself? Um, I, I am very, very grateful to the village uh, and its residents for the opportunity. Um, very much like being here, like the feel of it. Um, and, um, you know, I think I came into what is a uh, fairly well-ran police department and it's going in the right course and um, you know my job as interim chief is will just be to keep it going in the direction it's going so um, and he's excited yeah. about street fair <laughs> 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 yes. and brian he wants to talk about the chili yes <laughs> as long as it's not 38 and raining i'm very excited <laughs> about the street fair no yeah i didn't get your that. message until over the weekend so we'll definitely talk chili <laughs> thank you great thanks and welcome um, okay, where's the agenda? It's right here. Um, next, uh, under announcements, we have Marty Heidi uh, from uh, Congressman Turner's office here to share a few comments uh, about what's going on in Washington. Um, I have a handout. Uh, my name is Marty Heidi, and I'm Green County Outreach for Congressman Mike Turner. And in addition to being outreach, I'm also a caseworker for constituent services in the Dayton District Office. And um, I've been here before talking about constituent services, but primarily those are the help that we give to people that can't quite navigate through the federal government system, um, and that is difficult, as you know. And uh, we have really had some fantastic successes getting people 
decisions uh, that we sort of think that on their own they may not have gotten. So we've been very successful. I just wanted to come and talk about passports tonight because we had quite a few passport cases this summer for people that were looking for passports and had very little time to get them. And Central State sent some uh, band members and football players to the Bahamas uh, for a game in September. So we got a rush of students for the passports there. Um, passports, as you know, are now needed to travel in and out of the United States. If you go to Canada, you have to have a passport. If you go to Mexico, you have to have a passport. Um, if you travel by car to Canada and Mexico, you can get what's called a passport card, which is like a credit card. Um, if you travel by air, of course, you need the regular passport book. If you need it in four to six weeks, you can just apply through the website with the application, send it through the mail. If you need it in three weeks, you can go to the post office and ask them to expedite it. And if you need it in 10 days, you can go through Congressman Turner's office and we can expedite it in about 10 days. Um, if you need it tomorrow, because um, you want a trip on Wheel of Fortune, and you have to travel tomorrow, we send you to Detroit, which is the nearest processing agency, and you appear in person and they'll issue the passport on the spot. Um, passports, the expedite fee for quick turnaround is $60. And the information I've given you is the website for the Department of State, travel.state.gov. And if you are traveling, I encourage you to sign up for the STEP program, which is the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. And this gives the consulates and embassies information about you coming there. And it also, um, the Department of State website has uh, warnings and alerts traveling overseas which is kind of a increasing um, awareness is a very good thing so we've had uh, probably about 60 cases this summer of passports we have 350 open cases right now of overall government uh, agencies so we're a very busy office so anybody has any questions Marty I have one thing to get back to Congressman Turner when Brian and I went to the quarterly meeting down in, in uh, Miamisburg. Um, we talked to him about whether there was there are any uh, programs to help us fund our new water plant. Mm -hmm. And he thought that there might be. Okay. So if you can get back um, and, and remind him of that. I, think, I, I, I did send an email, but I haven't gotten a response Okay, yet. I'll take care of that tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, I'm out of the Dayton District Office, 937-225-2843. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. Mm -hmm, thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, the minutes of the. Um, I, 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 excuse me. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh, I don't know what I'm thinking. <coughs> go ahead. Um, on Thursday, uh, at the Glen Helen building, there's going to be what's being called climate conversations. I think there are some. Um, information out at, at the table out there and I have some here. <coughs> um, these conversations are coming out of uh, being spearheaded, I guess you could say, from the climate march in New York City, from some of the people that attended the climate march. It's being sponsored by Antioch College, Community Solutions, Glen Helen, the Council Land Trust, and the People's Climate March. And one of the goals that may come out of this uh, uh, conversation is to, to start to develop a climate change initiative for the Yellow Springs area. Um, so Seattle has done such a thing. So I would encourage anyone who's interested in this to attend this Thursday evening at 7 o'clock at the Glen Helen Building. Thanks, Marianne. Um, any other announcements? Yeah, actually, I did want to announce the uh, Public Art Commission is not going to be meeting this Wednesday, uh, October 8th. And also, uh, I wanted to mention to Council and, and Patty that uh, I will be attending the full Ohio Municipal League Conference. And so, if anyone does see any sessions that they think would be particularly useful, I mean, I've, I've marked lots of things, uh, please let me know. <coughs> I need to announce that street, street fair is Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure everybody in town knows about street fair. 
Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, any community announcements? Okay, let's move on to the minutes from the September 15th meeting. Seems so long ago. Um, page one. Page two. I did have one um, near the top, the third paragraph. Um, Zoe Meister seconded Edwards. The, it says objections. I don't think I, th I don't think Joan was was mostly objections. I think she has made comments. So I just like suggest we change objections to comments. Anything else on page two? Page three. Page four, uh, in the uh, manager's report, it says village staff is scheduled to evaluate water plant consultants. It was actually a review committee uh, that had more than just village staff on it. Okay. So it should probably re review committee. Okay. Page five. Yes. Um, understanding reports, uh, where it starts out with how she noted the resignation. Um, it says that um, the nominee Couch stated that they followed the new process for approving board and commission members with the nominee receiving two interviews. I, my, it's my understanding not that the nominee needs to have two interviews, but needs to be interviewed by two counsel. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, if, so it could be two interviews, but it's really yeah. making sure that two counsel people. Have That's correct. Right. That is what you said. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. So you, that is what you said, and that's not, said, yeah, yeah, and we can't, so we can't oh. change it, yeah. I mean, but it's good to just be clear, be clear that the, the policy is not that we have to have two interviews. Right. One or two, potentially, with two people, or that can't be worked out. Although, I mean, we, and we did also elaborate that Jerry and I interviewed them, but yeah, that's right. Okay. I mean, that's certainly what was implied. Um, up closer to the top, the paragraph right above where it says clerk's report. Um, Bates noted the DPNL is officially filed with the state to terminate contracts with certain, says villages, it says villages in that paragraph, tw or in that, yeah, in that paragraph twice. I think that's just municipalities because there are cities within. But the, the uh, contracts that they filed to terminate, I believe, were all with the Oh, okay, oh, that's, not TIP or not TIP City? No. I'd have to look at the list again, but I think they were all villages. But we could also, I mean, if we say municipalities, yes. then it covers it, so that way we're covered. If that's, I mean, but you, if you said villages, I guess yeah. you can't change it. Yeah, I think okay. it was we all. We can't change yeah. it. Okay, never mind. <coughs> never mind. Page six. Okay, um, motion to approve. I move to <coughs> approve the minutes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Did we get a second? second. second. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, petitions and communications. Okay. My agenda. Oh, a review of the agenda. Oh, review yes. of the agenda. Okay. Do we want to? Um, I would like to have some kind of agenda briefly to just say a few things about the report that I submitted for the Environmental Commission and to make a request. Okay, so that, which I included in the report. So that would be would that be new business or old business? Uh, probably old because we've already talked mm -hmm. about the I think it's been yeah, I think it's been discussed in official meeting yeah. time. So I would say yeah, under after okay. the HRC. That's cool. Anything else? Okay. Um, Lori? Okay. Well um, uh, the climate conversation flyer has already been covered by uh, and um, she'll uh, we'll also be talking about her report, so I'm not going to talk about that too much. Um, the the Gidi one didn't get in my packet, and then I did skim it when I was at work because it got sent to me electronically. But I'm my thank you. <laughs> so I'm like I can't talk about it because I can't remember it very well. Um, the groundwater. Fund. Yes, what she is suggesting is that uh, eligible nonprofit organizations can receive um, groundwater funds. I'm trying to figure out too. Oh, yeah. groundwater guardian funds um, up to $2,000. It's not a lot, but it, it does, um, 
it is some money that may be available. But it's but only for the great Miami. I, I oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's only the great Miami. Right. right. And that's been pointed out to me. I've heard Sarah speak twice now at NBRPC <coughs> meetings, and she's very specific about that. Right. Okay, so basically this says never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and then uh, Karen, maybe you can talk a little bit about your um, draft letter. Right, I had a uh, discussion with um, Susan Jen um, Jennings, from, who's the new executive director for Community Solutions, and they are um, working to put together a YouTube channel that is about energy and climate issues. Um, and focusing on they'll have their um, videos from um, this up an upcoming climate um, session workshop that they're doing in November their past ones you know they may even videotape put put tapes of energy board meetings you know interviews with people workshops you know all kinds of really cool educational things maybe do tours of houses and so it's basically to a, a channel that's going to be um, about not not just about Yellow Springs but it will certainly feature a lot of Yellow Springs um, so um, she asked well actually she called me to ask for a letter um, uh, of support um, they're putting they're giving a, a grant to the community foundation sending a grant request and she asked for a letter of support from the chamber and I said well would you like one from council too um, and I, I thought that it might be something we would be very um, interested in supporting I like the idea um, of us standing behind our, our values and beliefs and, and putting that out um, as much as we can. So I wrote this letter. Judy has the signed copy. If council is in agreement with this, I'll have Judy send it to, uh, to Susan to include in her packet. Yes. I say yes. Mm -hmm. I say yes. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, now we're moving on to public hearings and legislation. Uh, first, we have second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2014-21, declaring one block of Hyde Road a no parking anytime zone. All right. Whereas it has come to the attention of the Yellow Springs Police Department that there is a need to prohibit parking in the last block of Hyde Road, House Numbers 1029, 1490, and 1495 nearest the covered bridge, now therefore the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that. Section 1, the following section shall be amended to read. 452.14M, prohibited parking areas. M, parking shall be prohibited in the last block of Hyde Road at house numbers 1029, 1490, and 1495. Section 2, this ordinance shall be in effect in full force at the earliest date provided by law. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So I move. Second. <laughs> okay. Uh, Patty, um, discussion, or just explain this again? Um, this is the section down by the covered bridge. Um, it, when people park along the sides of the road there uh, by the covered bridge, it inhibits the ability to see oncoming traffic from both directions as cars are pulling out of the bridge. So this is to prohibit the parking in the area and increase the visibility for the cars and hopefully prevent a few, some fewer accidents and, and close calls. Comments from council? This is a public hearing, so I'll open the floor to public comment. If you come up to the microphone and state your name, and we have three minute time limit. Paul Graham, I live at the corner of, of uh, Corey and uh, High Road. Yeah. And uh, as the bridge was under construction, I at that time realized the sort of hazards involved, but I also was concerned about the nuisance factor since we live right at the corner. And as a matter of fact, I was hesitant to uh, contact Jason regarding this, as well as the uh, county commissioner, partly because of my reluctance uh, uh, in terms of lack of empathy for the not in my backyard and syndrome. <laughs> but uh, in addition to the nuisance factor, which was my initial concern, uh, an even greater concern, particularly after the installation of a privacy fence and after several months of the bridge being open is with hazard uh, safety. And I just wanted to cite a few sort of examples in terms of the hazards. Uh, certainly the visibility is a big factor and part of the uh, hazard 
regarding visibility is the fact that uh, people parking uh, at the bridge frequently do not park at the curb parallel to the curb. Some park at an angle and some park in front of the bridge. Uh, in addition, there, uh, and these are just some examples of things that I have observed, people uh, uh, park uh, in front of the bridge and get out, leave the car doors open as they take pictures, uh, which certainly is a hazard. In addition, people park and then subsequently uh, U-turn in front of the bridge, oh, wow. which is a tremendous hazard. Hmm. Um, the uh, other thing is that people park and stand in the street in front of the bridge to take pictures. And believe it or not, some people have even parked on the bridge and gotten out and taken pictures. Of course, you ought to put it, no parking sign in the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but that has, a, has <laughs> certainly occurred. And uh, uh, this is no longer, I don't think, a factor, but during good weather, occasionally, believe it or not, there were parties in the bridge, people parking in front of the bridge. Uh, so there are a number of different hazards I have observed, and I'm sure there are many others which other people have not observed. Um, in addition to uh, the concerns I have, these, some of the examples I just cited, uh, I just wanted to indicate that if the uh, three addresses which appear in the ordinance, if two of those addresses are the addresses on Corey Street, one of them is an error. If it's my address, it's 1475, not 1495. Whether that should be corrected or not, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I'm but sure that's. I wanted to mention that. Yeah. I'm sure it's supposed to be your, your oh, residence. Okay. The other thing is that I just want to suggest possibly that there could be some curb uh, painting on Hyde Road <coughs> at the cor corner there in front of those two high road addresses. Yeah, I think Jason has already taken that under advisement oh, okay. and was going to do that. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Paul, um, yes. you're, you're Corey Street though, right? Are you yes. Corey? So we may need to amend that. Oh, there may add. be one or two okay. high road addresses. And oh, but those addresses I think are Corey Street addresses. So the, the 1400 ones. Yes. Okay, well we'll, we'll okay. make sure we can. So, right, it should probably be read um, house number 1029 Hyde and 14 and 9, 1495 Court. Corey Street. Yeah. Or you said 1475. 75. Sorry, 75. Right address. Correct. Got to correct and correct. Yes. Um, Sorry about that. I'd like to ask Paul a question. Yes. Um, is it, are, do you think that the primary safety concern, or at least the safety concern, is people coming, I guess, from the east, like say coming from the riding center, coming through the bridge? toward the west and and people are mostly on your side of that bridge stopping is that where it's that yes also they stop on the other side uh, both yeah, sides both sides uh -huh. the other thing is that I didn't mention before but that's really quite a hazardous intersection many drivers don't consider the eastern western part of that intersection as an intersection they take it as a curve uh, I mean, it's a curve, uh, particularly people uh, late in the afternoon coming from Morris Bean, they come around there. I mean, it's a curve. It's not a, it's not an intersection, you know. I mean, you're, you're talking about going onto the bridge? No. I'm or, or turning onto on High, onto Corey. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Can, can I ask um, Naomi to come up? Can we ask you a question? Or I ask you a question? S so what's the jurisdictional issues there? Um, because, I mean, the other side of the bridge isn't the village, right? And right. the bridge it's isn't Green the County. village. Right, it's Green County Sheriff's Office. So you guys can sit or, you know, can patrol that whole quarry. Right house. But if, do, does Green County ever come around? Not unless you're called out. Well, and, and then they're not even really allowed to go down um, into the veil, right? So, so their jurisdiction ends at the bridge because the veil. No, they're allowed. I mean, they're allowed to go down there. Okay. Down so, there do they, they have jurisdiction in the veil? Yes. Okay. And we don't have jurisdiction in the veil. We do. Okay. Okay. I mean, have you seen some of these? Have you yes. heard of some of these issues? Yeah, we sat out there um, a couple of weeks ago. I think in, in 
this gentleman came home and there were cars, exactly what he said, parking, doors wide open, uh, not letting traffic through. They wouldn't let the, I had one of my officers in an SUV, they wouldn't let him through. Uh, wow. Wow. Well, I mean, it sounds like there's issues that, um, you know, I don't know if we can be in contact with, with um, Bob Geyer, with mm. the Green County Sheriff. It sounds like there are some issues that need to be dealt with. I think once the signage goes up too, that's going to help. Yeah. The painting on the road. Yeah. Okay. I will I'll note, I did write before the bridge was even completed, because I walk there all the time with my dogs. You probably mm -hmm. see me. And um, I wrote him a letter as soon as they said they were going to put a bridge in, saying there are lots of walkers, there are lots of horses. Um, I was very concerned about what kind of bridge, and they never got back to me. And I, I, I didn't follow through after they didn't get back to me. But I, I was aware, but we really were not consulted at all during the process. Um, it was really what they did. And so. Apologize. <laughs> but I talked with Guy, and uh, mm -hmm. he indicated that, particularly on my side of the bridge, you know, they have no jurisdiction. And right. I asked him initially about uh, no parking signs, and, and since it was my concern was initially, you know, my side, <laughs> uh, he indicated he had no jurisdiction over that. So. Thank oh, you, Paul. Okay, thank you, you so much. Yeah, Good to see you at a meeting. Time. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, any other comments from citizens, Sam? Yeah, I'm uh, here to, spark, to speak in favor of this ordinance. Um, we've all seen the covered bridge. Uh, we've all examined the structure. I don't know of anybody that doesn't like it. But in our enthusiasm, I think we've overlooked the fact that any negative impacts in the way of noise or traffic or safety or whatever would have a very disproportionate impact on a very small number of people that live close by. Um, somehow I was under the impression that this ordinance would prohibit traffic uh, parking on the last block of Cory as well as on Hyde. I guess it doesn't, but if it did, I would support that as well. I think we owe it to the folks that live nearby. I don't have my, uh, I don't have my coordinates from last time. So I'll just share with you that it was I who went through the bridge and found a car parked in the middle with both doors open and both people out climbing on the bridge. Oh my gosh. I was not real happy with that. <laughs> but I support this and would encourage it to be extended into Corey Street by one block. Thank you, Sam. Any other citizen comments? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, I guess I, I am a little bit concerned, Patty, that, um, that this is an ordinance and we aren't totally clear on the numbers. The numbers. So I'm, yeah. how can we? I, I can go check the big old map. Uh, after we get through legislation, maybe we can come back and, and just make certain that the numbers are correct. Uh, it, the, yeah. the map with every house number is in Patty's office. Yeah. Okay. What does council okay. think? So, so should we just hold on this? You're suggesting yeah, we hold on this vote? Can we ask Naomi to? I, I seem to Naomi remember that, do that. Well, I, I seem to remember that the last portion of Corey Street is a no parking already. So that is correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, just checking. So okay, so we'll, we'll. Why don't I ask Mr. Graham to come with me and we'll check it the numbers real quick. Okay. Real quick. Take a short break. Let's take a short break. As soon as Patty sits, gets back, we'll call the meeting back to order. We didn't have to run. That's okay. Um, so we got the clarification from Patty. So um, the address will be, the ordinance will read um, that there is a need to prohibit parking in the last block of Hyde Road, house numbers 1029 Hyde, and 1490 and 1475 Cory. So those that will be that change will be in um, in the whereas and then down in the uh, actual ordinance M itself. Okay. Um, we do have a motion. Um, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. McQueen. Yes. Sims. Yes. Askland? Yes. Housh? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. OK. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have Resolution 2014-51, authorizing the village manager to contract for health insurance for village employees. Okay, whereas it is the policy of the village to provide health insurance coverage on a group basis for eligible employees, and whereas the village's current health insurance carrier, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shields, has provided the most competitive quote to the village for the same level of coverage as in the previous year, which said coverage a coverage exceeds the federal government's minimum standard for health insurance coverage under the Affordable Care Act and whereas the quote for coverage is detailed in Exhibit A which is attached here to and made a part hereof and whereas the village manager is recommending that the council approve a contract for plan year 2014-15 with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield for health insurance for village employees. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that Section 1, the village manager is authorized to execute a one-year contract for health insurance with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield for the plan year starting December 1, 2014, with the terms included in Exhibit A. Section 2, this procure procurement is hereby determined to comply with the procurement procedures of the village pursuant to the home rule powers of the village. All actions regarding this procurement were done in full compliance with Ohio Open Meetings Law. Thank you. Can I have a motion? So move. Second. Okay. So this is some good news. Just think if this had been the usual 10% increase that we've been seeing in health insurance. So we actually have a decrease. Mm -hmm. Patty? We do. We have a, uh, I believe it's 4.4%. Melissa, is that correct? Decrease. Um, it, it is exactly the same plan that we currently have, which is a high deductible health savings account plan. Um, we're actually getting a 4.4% decrease in our premiums. Please do not expect that again next year um, <laughs> because I don't think that we're going to have that same thing happen next year. But um, we are not going to do better than this. They did shop some other plans just to see how they compared and uh, nowhere close to, to what we're paying. So um, you can see on the back the, the cost, um, premium costs for all of the different plans. The employee does pay 15% of that cost. Um, and then you also see the village's contribution to the SS HSAs there. Uh, and the employee also adds additional through payroll deduction uh, to the HSA. Thank you. Questions, comments from council? Citizens, questions, comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next is resolution 2014-52, approving the amended solid waste management plan of the Greene County Solid Waste Management District. Whereas the Greene County Solid Waste Management District Policy Committee is responsible to prepare and amend the Greene County Solid Waste Management Plan, and whereas by resolution number 2014-917-1, the Greene County Solid Waste Management District Policy Committee adopted the amended Solid Waste Management Plan on, dis on September 17, 2014, and whereas pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 3734, Point five five B, the Board of County Commissioners and the legislative authority of each municipal corporation or township under the jurisdiction of the district must approve or disapprove the amended solid waste management plan by ordinance or resolution. And whereas this body has reviewed the amended solid waste management plan and considered it at a duly called public meeting. And whereas this the amended solid waste management plan furthers the public interest, now therefore be it resolved that Section 1, the amended Green County Solid Waste Management Plan adopted on September 17, 2014, is hereby approved by Council for the Village of Yellow Springs. And Section 2, the Clerk of Council shall promptly deliver a copy of this resolution of approval to the Green County Solid Waste Management District Policy Committee at Green County Environmental Services, 2045, 2145 Greenway Boulevard, Zeno, Ohio, 45385. Thank you. She does Can I have a motion. Well. <laughs> so moved. Second. Okay. Um, we've had a chance. I this came to us um, in draft form over a month ago. Um, I think um, citizens had about a, a month to review it, 30 days to review it. So um, I, I will say that Green County Solid Waste Management is a great department. They um, they provided a great plan. Um, they they actually provide great. Um, recycling services at their recycling yard and and um, they actually bring in a re recycling um, containers for street fair so it's it's a great department um, there was some attempt by the the commissioners to um, modify and restrict and close the the recycling center um, but that was overruled so um, you know patty had reviewed this plan in more detail than i did and and she said it looked good and um i did review it and i, I have to be honest with you green county um 
it does an incredible job compared to some of the other solid waste management districts that I've looked at. Um, I mean, the fact that they're exceeding their goals right. um, the way they are and the, the budget that they maintain is, is this is just an incredible job and uh, I would urge council to approve the plan or the resolution supporting the plan. I have um, a couple questions that um, it's, uh, at the bottom of the first page it talks about the tons of solid waste that uh, were generated and it talks about uh, what was got what was recycled mm -hmm. do we have those figures for Yellow Springs um, I would have to ask Jason if he has those from Rumkey um, I don't know that they would keep that, but we can ask, certainly, and see I if think, it's available. I think, and I'm looking at it from the Environmental Commission uh, perspective of, um, you know, how, how much, and, and I think it would be useful to track how much are we putting into the waste stream, how much are we recycling, and and really maybe set, starting to set some goals as a well and, and and honestly Marianne if we don't have them um, we're gonna have to bid that contract out next year anyway and we can make it part of the contract specs that that mm -hmm. be included mm -hmm. as you know that tracking be included as part of that okay. well, that's that. and, and, do you get a tonnage report so and I think that it did does it break out recycling is already excellent there well, well get I know that. we get a tonnage report and I'm pretty sure that that's separated out okay I will bring that to you at the next meeting okay thank you great um, and then on the second page at the top I noticed it said the industrial sector recycles 94 percent of its waste compared to what well 30 yeah, yeah. I mean that's I, honestly I think that's because they have more incentive because if they recycle it they pay less they're paying less to right. in their solid waste Mm -hmm. yes. I mean that is so, that's impressive and right. there's money in a lot of it yeah. I mean a lot of their waste is metal and so a lot of their waste is going to be things that bring an income yeah. right. it's it's like what we do out at Sutton Farm we we recycle our scrap metal mm -hmm. and you, you cash that in and and it goes back into the budget mm -hmm. Great, cool um, comments questions from citizens all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. And then finally, um, a resolution approving the hiring of Dave Hale as interim chief of police. Okay. Whereas Chief of Police Anthony Pettiford has, has announced his resignation effective the end of the day on September 19, 2014, and whereas Council wishes to engage David Hale as the Interim Chief of Police, also known as the Temporary Chief of Police, while they undertake a search for a permanent Chief of Police, now therefore the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, <laughs> hereby resolves that. <coughs> Section 1, David Hale is appointed to serve as Interim Chief of Police, also known as Temporary Chief of Police, for the Village of Yellow Springs in a form substantially similar to that delineated in the attached contract exhibit. A. Section 2, the duties of the temporary chief of police shall be those as provided for in the charter for the chief of police and pursuant to Exhibit A. Section 3, the temporary chief of police shall be considered a temporary employee on a full-time status. The employee shall receive the salary and benefits negotiated in his contract. Section 4, the actions of this council are pursuant to the home rule powers of the village. Section 5, this resolution shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. It is the intent of the council that the forenamed contract will be effective as of October 2nd, 2014, that being the date that David Hale shall assume these duties. Thank you. Um, motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, do we have any discussion about this? Been duly sworn in and twice. Twice. <laughs> yeah. Any comments, questions from citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Welcome aboard again. Yes, thank you. Officially. Um, okay, now we're at the time in the agenda where we will hear from citizens about anything that isn't on the agenda. Um, come up to the front, speak into the microphone, and state your name, and three minutes um, for comments. Anybody want to speak? Okay. Um, seeing and hearing no comments, I will bring it back to the table. Um, no special reports. Moving on to old business. Um, Brian will give us an update on the um, Human Relations Commission uh, public forum, police public forum. Yes. So the uh, forum on local policing. Um, so we had already established uh, at our last meeting that uh, this will be happening on October 23rd uh, from 7 to 8 30. 
here at the Bryan Center. Um, we have decided that rooms A and B will be the best venue for that. And um, uh, we're also publicly announcing there's one more planning meeting on October 18th. Uh, you may have seen in the newspaper or otherwise that we have nine boxes throughout the village to collect input about, um, I guess, a couple things in particular. One, what citizens feel are the best practices uh, related to local policing. Also, uh, what are thoughts from citizens about um, our new chief and, and characteristics that she or he would have. Um, uh, there will be child care, so uh, as we've done in the past, uh, the Bryan Youth Center will uh, be able to provide child care for uh, any parents that need that. And um, the, I guess briefly what has been <coughs> proposed as the format is to begin by sort of an introduction and, and framing of some of the issues. And we're planning to uh, collect the feedback on the 17th. We've asked people to do that by the end of the day uh, so that on the 18th we can look at what some of the major issues are to, to form those uh, questions. And then we will have breakout sessions that will happen in the room uh, so that small groups, which will be facilitated, can talk about those issues and then report it back out to the group as a whole. Um, the group that was planning this, the HRC, and we actually had uh, 10 people around the table, uh, felt that it was timely and it would be informative for council and, and for our village manager. And uh, so there was a, a strong consensus, actually Marianne was there, that, um, that this would be a good thing to gather more information to help with the process. And Brian, any questions, Jess? Yeah, I had a question. The, I thought that the meeting on the 18th was to agenda plan for something else. Is that? That's a, it, 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 <laughs> no, that, are you thinking about the November 1st meeting, maybe? Um, maybe I am. Yeah, uh, so we had decided that uh, over these two weeks and collecting the data that it would be good for uh, HRC members and also the facilitators to see what the general thoughts were um, so that we could really focus that session. One of the things we've been emphasizing is that this is the beginning of the discussion or a beginning uh, and we're certainly going to be looking at other ways for uh, our officers to interact with citizens and, and for everyone to, to understand what, what's going on. And um, I should mention we also have put a, a survey monkey online. Actually, Chrissy Cruz did that. So if people want to uh, go via that avenue, and that link is in the YS News, or you could ask Judy or, or any of us, um, that's another avenue. So is it possible to put that on cable to let, you know, write it on the cable so that Yeah, I think we could do an announcement. So I can uh, I can get that I'll I'll get that information so that we can put an announcement on, uh, but you know, feedback can be anonymous. Uh, it can be attached to a person's name, and as we've always said before, uh, if any if people feel more comfortable with contacting a council member or, or emailing Judy, uh, we want to collect as much feedback as we can. And I think. Um, that's about it. I know I, I know there's been information in the YS News and there will continue to be. Um, comments, any questions from council members to Brian? Or comments about the forum? Would you add anything, Marianne? Um, no, I think we had a good planning meeting um, and I feel, I feel good about it. I mean, I, 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 I like the idea of allowing uh, citizens to have some initial comments before the forum, which then uh, the people that are planning it can look at and and sort of see, at least on the early responders, you know what people are concerned about, um, and also put that out ahead of time. I guess it really won't go into the news. What well, could go into the newspaper? Actually, the the part. plan was to uh, similar to um, things we've done in the past to put together kind of a summary of that to uh, which. Uh, the group has agreed to get ready by Monday. So, and I think I, I see this as the big, well, not the beginning really, but one step 
in uh, working to become clearer about what we want with the police department and how the community and the police can work together better. I mean, it won't end here. Right. And, and what I talked to, to uh, Brian briefly about was that um, the, the folks that are going to serve on the selection committee will be participating in the forum mm -hmm. and maybe have them one in each of the different groups mm -hmm. to bring back the input to the committee from that, that particular group. So is, are there plans to videotape the meeting? Um, I hope so. I mean, is that something you're working out with, you're coordinating with Channel 5 then? Yeah. Okay. And I take it that you will have um, easels and pads and pens for every table. That's right. Those so, logistics. Yeah, we, uh, we're looking at, uh, based on, I think, the size of the room, we can have seven tables and a flip chart at each table and, okay. and a facilitator with each, uh, each as well. So we've got seven facilitators lined up. Well, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, many of them from our village mediation. So. Okay. Um, Uda, I saw your hand up. I think some of my questions were answered, but I'll come up to the mic. Okay. I guess I just wanted to know... Can you state your name? Yeah, yes. my name is Udo Sheng. And I guess the question was, in some of the things that I was question, answering, you answered already, so... But I was going to say, so when we do this, and we come up with this summary, and it's put together, how will it be implemented? Where will it go after that? You know, will, will council get it? Will Patty get it? Where will it go? So I was just wondering what the route yeah, is. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And actually, uh, for sure, council and, and Patty will, uh, will get that uh, summary. But what was also suggested at our planning meeting is that we should schedule a follow-up with the facilitators to discuss this further mm -hmm. and, and highlight things. Uh, I will be honest, we we spent two hours at our last planning meeting just kind of getting this far, so so we'll be doing more of that on the 18th. Um, but I thought that was a great suggestion. So definitely there was an emphasis on follow-up. I was at that meeting, uh, one of the meetings, and I know one of the things that we talked about was the difference between local, what we said local policing versus community policing. And because we had said, well, what, what does that mean? You know, right. and so maybe you know we can also bring that in as to what we mean by local policing. Right. You know, so it's clearer to our town. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Una. Una. And and oh. related to that, I will just mention that uh, it was brought to uh, the HRC's attention that community policing, that term, may have a certain connotation, which was not what we were after. So we've been calling it the forum on local policing to get away from that connotation that some people might not agree with. Okay, and what time is the meeting on the 18th? Oh, sorry, it's uh, 1 p.m. and it'll be in rooms A and B again. Okay, other comments, questions from citizens about the forum? Um, so, uh, sounds. Well, I, I would just like to say, I think uh, Uda's question about well, where what happens after that is, is a good one. And I don't know that it's really been planned and and so I think that that some time needs to be taken to look at that I mean it's not just going to rest with HRC but HRC has a role it's not just going to rest with the police department or council but to look at how how we can continue to enhance the relationship within the community and between the community and the police department and uh, have that have it just get better Right. And related to that, I know Patty's planning a meet and greet that... We are, and actually I think um, Sergeant Penrod is working on that, trying to find a location and a good date um, to have that so that uh, the community can meet with all the new officers that we have and our interim chief, and, um, and she's trying to get that together for me. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks all. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Marianne, you um, want to talk about your yeah. report on Environmental Commission? Yeah. So, um, as I read the charge of the Environmental Commission, which uh, is quite broad and, uh, and includes uh, having relationships not only with local environmental groups but state and national, um, I decided that I wanted to reach out to different organizations in the community that uh, 
either have an environmental component or in the case of like the public schools might be interested so that that was has been a good experience and I've gotten responses from just about every organization that I contacted in particular the Antioch College I think it's going to be such a wealth of uh, such a resource for the village and there are so many collaborative opportunities between uh, the college and uh, the village um, for example one of the, the faculty members is, uh, works with is a hydrologist and so I mean there, there's so there's just a lot of resources there I think that we'll be able to use and so I'm excited I've I've there I've talked to several people who I think are interested in being on the Commission um, and as I was doing this I was developing uh, a list of potential projects um, I'm not planning on us discussing them now if any if any council members or citizens wants to have input onto those I'm happy to listen to them and I'm looking at this these projects um, as something that might comprise like a five three to five year plan and some things might get dropped other things might get included but um, uh, one thing that also I ran into is there are people who work in the village now that in, like for example at the college who have a lot of expertise would potentially like to be on the Commission but they don't live here or they don't live here now and or they live outside of the village and they work here um, and so I had made a request that I'd like council to consider, uh, which is that one of the positions be available to someone who works in the village but doesn't necessarily live here. Uh, another uh, request would be that a position be available to someone who lives within a five mile radius. So they might live you know, just over the border in Clark County, for example. They're outside of the township. So I would like to entertain, I'd like, count, I'd like to talk with, see what council has to say about those two changes. And it's a total of four members. It's five, five including a council mm -hmm. person. Okay, so, if, and what you're suggesting would be two potential members yeah. who could potentially live outside yes. the village, two of the five. Yeah. yeah. I would be supportive of that. Um, I think for you know I think I, I think it, it bring it shows the fact that you know really our environment and you know especially if we're talking about the wellhead plan I mean it, that's a pretty broad area so the idea that we would be taking um, input and having counsel from people who you know have a broader expertise and also broader geographic expertise makes sense to me so um, is there, there uh, I didn't think and we talked about this the other day and I didn't think to ask is, is there there's nothing in our charter that would preclude us not that I not that I can think yeah. of um, in fact I think at one point uh, one of the committees or commissions specifically said that we had someone planning from, that's uh, planning, planning. Yeah. Yes. And, and the other commissions really aren't dealt with in the county yeah, in, exactly. in the charter yeah. anyway right. um, so. and you know I I think that the environmental uh, commission is it's it's a specialty area mm -hmm. I mean, and, and so I would think that but do we need to revise the ordinance yeah, for the yeah, environmental? You would have, yes, you would okay. have to do that. Because, I mean, I guess we've talked, you know, at a couple different meetings about needing maybe to, to look at some of those, uh, tweaking them or that idea of a general ordinance that, you know, relates to them. And, then, and it seems timely. I mean, you know, there, there seem to be some other commissions as well that, you know, we, we've been using a lot of what the Planning Commission sets a precedent for in the Charter uh, alternates, for example. Uh, you know, it's something that HRC, before I was even on council, had alternates, uh, but those aren't provided for in the ordinances for those commissions. Well, and there are some other pieces of legislation that should probably be updated. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think if council wants to look at those, if you want to send the suggestions to Judy or I, we can put together a list of the various pieces of legislation and, and get those out to the council for review. And then if you want to schedule this special meeting to, to discuss. And 
I'm curious, you know, we, we I know we're going to have charter review coming up. Uh, could we put this sort of general ordinance that applies to all commissions in our charter? I don't think so. No. no. We okay. don't want anything I, that I specific. Think you have to be, I think you have to be more specific in, in okay. the charter. Gotcha. The, the reason the planning commission is, is so specific is it's dealt with in state law right. as well. It's so. a legislative body. Right. 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 I mean, there may be language in the, in the charter about committees and commissions about ad hoc and and these kinds of things maybe right. we might want we'll look at that and see what it says right. maybe there is something a little bit we could tweak mm -hmm. in that we'll see okay mm -hmm. um what seems to happen with these commissions is there's just there's waning and growing interest they mm -hmm. just there's kind of a natural cycle and sometimes when there's a lot to focus on you kind of want more members mm -hmm. and but you don't want to set the number so high mm -hmm. that you it, when when the interest or the the projects or the activity is lower you don't ha you, you you effectively make it completely impossible to do anything because you've got to got to have five people right. there to have a quorum right um, so sometimes I think we've even changed some of the language on some of them to minimum of four members um, so that if there was a lot range, of interest yeah. or a range. Right. Um, but I kind of like keeping it, I, I tend to like smaller committees just because I think they can, they can, they can more easily just move and get things done. Right. And uh, that's again where I like the alternate strategy, you know, uh, having that, you know, because just like with planning commission, you know, when uh, people can attend and you've got other folks, uh, that seems to work really well. So and you're kind of training that person so that if somebody has to go come off, right, it's more, right. it is more seamless that way. Well, I think that although and I don't know how planning commission does it and, and it did come up a little bit um, with the Antioch appeal that you weren't you didn't attend the Planning Commission meeting Jerry did then he had to carry through mm -hmm. and I think it would be yeah I don't know I think Chris does actually attend all the Chris Till I believe does attend um, as the He's alternate very, most of the meetings so you know that good. might be something if somebody is an alternate and will be an active member and, or a voting member then um, it probably should be required that they actually attend the meetings, just mm -hmm. so they have the, so there's continuity if they do have to take a vote. Right. Um, I think the other thing. I mean, I think it, it. You know, most boards and commissions don't really have. They they are recommending bodies. They don't have final decisions. So, you know, I don't know how important. A, a vote actually is. I doubt that there are that many votes. But what I would also encourage people to do is if they are really interested, I mean, there are a lot of great things that, that Marianne is proposing for the Environmental Commission. So if people are interested and have expertise, sir, be, be an ex officio, just go to the meetings, be part of it, be part of the group and contribute to the meetings. I, I, you know, I don't think we certainly, they're all public meetings, so people can go to any meeting they want to go to. Um, and in the case of students, both the college and the, the uh, well, high school and our public school system, there are very likely going to be opportunities for student projects. And how that relates to the commission, I, I, I've been thinking about and talking to people about, but don't really know. But clearly, most of the things on the table for the commission are going to be done uh, not just by the, the commission. And some would be collaborative with the college or Tecumseh Land Trust or, or, di or, or, or a group of uh, organizations. So mm -hmm. um, how that all gets worked out remains to be seen. But, Great. but that will be involving a much bigger group of people, I anticipate. Does um, you know, I, I mean, we could make this really simple and just say at the next meeting to bring the ordinance. I would even be willing to just, it probably doesn't qualify as an emergency though, so we'll do two readings, so we can't, but you know, I, I guess, do we want to go farther? Do, do you, because you've expressed an interest, do you want to pull out all of the ordinances and see, although I don't know that we can do that at the next meeting. I mean, we probably want to review. Um, I mean, let's just make that a plan for, for 2015. You know, it's maybe something that you put on mm -hmm. um, on your to-do list for 2015 to look at the ordinances mm -hmm. for the other. Right, and, and, and in boards. fact, a lot of uh, uh, members of the commissions that I've been liaison for have uh, brought up different 
thoughts about how we could refine. So yeah, I definitely want to help with that. We haven't talked about doing a retreat. I don't know. Well, when did it'll we do be, it? It'll be in, in, the, in the spring. Oh, in the spring. Yeah, in the spring. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I'm wondering if this conversation would be something for yeah, a retreat. Yeah, I mean, we had a little bit of it at the, at the last retreat, too. So. so I guess, so is everybody in agreement that we can have an ordinance at the next, um, brought to the next meeting? Because Marianne is trying to get this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I'd like to be able to come to the next meeting with a <coughs> recommended. What do you think about the, uh, the alternate that that Brian was suggesting do you have feelings or thoughts about no, that? no I don't have feelings about it <laughs> I mean I, I just like would like to get the core group right well but, but I guess if we are gonna take the time to you know sort of refine this ordinance maybe some of those things we should consider you know, using this as a template I don't know I, I, you know maybe I can I can understand having alternates for planning, planning commission and for BZA because those are legislated and and BZA is more of a judicial body. Maybe we don't. Maybe instead of having a specific <coughs> alternate for the other commissions, what we do is just is just encourage people to participate who are interested. Maybe, yeah, and maybe for this, for environmental in particular, when there's an issue that we suspect there's more knowledge out there in the mm -hmm. community, or we know, you get the people who are on the commission yeah. to specifically contact those people and try to get the people to come to the mm -hmm. meetings um, yeah. you know so that I think when somebody is approached and yeah. said, please come to this meeting yeah I've talked to people, people who would. said I'd be happy to be a resource person but you know I, I don't want to yeah. be honest. you don't want to go to meetings yeah. yeah okay so let's let's just I mean so you would rather it sounds like you're you'd rather not go the, the uh, yeah I think so I, I mean I okay. I could see having a list of people who have said I will be right. a resource person for whatever so you and either Judy or Patty work on the language for the for the ordinance for the next meeting so if you just okay. get me the specific things okay. that you wish to have in the ordinance all right okay back and forth. I'll do that thanks uh, next on the agenda is the manager's report new business we don't, we don't have, have any. any. Oh, we don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Do you want to make up some new business? I, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we will not be flushing hydrants again this year. Um, as you know, we did it late in the year uh, because the filter was down at the plant and we had to wait till it was back in operation. Um, since we did the, the round of flushing, we have not had any complaints of brown water. So instead of just wasting the, the water and flushing them again when there doesn't seem to be a valid reason to do that, we're going to hold off. Um, we will be doing what we call draining the, uh, the hydrants for the winter. Uh, that does not mean that they're not gonna have water. They will have water in the case of an emergency, but we drain out the standing water to keep them from freezing. Um, but we will not be actually flushing the entire system. Uh, we recently received a check um, from the Drug Task Force um, as part of the work there in the amount of $10,739.67, and that will go into the Furtherance of Justice Fund. Um, we have received bids on the library roof. Um, council had set aside $150,000 uh, for the repair of the library roof uh, in this year's budget. The three bids uh, came in and the lowest of the three bids is $258,577.55. And the reason that Melissa has stayed for the rest of the meeting is to perhaps provide some alternative areas where that additional $108,000 can come from. Peg, before we do that, how how did we miss it by that much? I, I don't know, I mean, um, Jerry. I wasn't in the planning process. Um, well, I'm but, just, you know, because yeah. it, it, it seems like we had well, I, I, consultant and everything else. Yeah, with I us. did have an email from from Ted Donnell, who is the the architect, and he did say that initially he had sent um, a. Um, ballpark estimate of uh, I believe it was 204,000 um, to Laura Curlis where that got lost in the translation into the um, the current budget I'm not entirely sure 
Um, I did look at the budget. Jason showed me the budget for the various capital improvement projects from from last year's discussions, and it does have 150,000 for the library roof. So, um, Melissa, do you have any further insight? The area where the library improvements were set to come from was the facilities improvement fund. It had a beginning balance um, at the beginning of 2014 of 319,000 and some change. Out of that, um, earmarked for the year was 50,000 for the Sutton Farm preliminary work to be done, 150 for the roof as Patty indicated, and then 10,000 for the drywall drainage as well. So if you take all that and total it up, that's 210, um, and that leaves in that fund another 109,000. So effectively, what was the remaining balance on the the 100, roof? 108. It would it would drain the facilities improvement fund if we dedicated the rest of that to the library. I mean that is but, a possibility. Um, but, but where did the um, the 50000 for um, council chambers and um, the offices downstairs, where did that come from? General fund. That's in the general? Yes, that okay. came from the general fund. Oh, that's right. Um, so, but that means that no more capital improvements this year, um, which would include um, the Sutton Farm building unless we finance that and don't pay anything until next year, correct? Yeah, the, the Sutton Farm... Uh, project it sounds as if how that has evolved would only include streets and parks equipment and if that was the case then that would come out of the streets and parks budgets that's another alternative but that's funded by the general fund because that would be above and beyond the operations of that so I guess what we have earmarked for this year we could look at and if everything is still a go for the earmark for Sutton Farm or for in yes for well if those two projects if everything because nothing has been spent out of that facilities improvement fund so far so we do have is it is anything encumbered nothing is encumbered okay the one thing that I know that we've talked about taking out of the the fifty thousand that was set aside for the preliminary Sutton Farm work the one thing that we have talked about taking out of that is. Um, the concrete pad to move the transformers mm -hmm. because we're, we have to pour another concrete pad to move the transformers so the thought was to go ahead and get that done out of that preliminary work um, that said depending on what bids come back uh, on the 20th on the Sutton Farm building that's the bid opening date we may not be able to build that without preliminary design work. Right now it's just built out as a prefab structure with certain um, options such as heating and that kind of thing. Um, if we don't get any, any good bids back, we may have to reject them all and actually do the preliminary work, which has been estimated at approximately 25,000. Have, have we overscoped the roof? No, no. for the library. the library. Roof? For the library. I mean, I mean, that's I sort mean, of where I'm looking. Actually, actually, they changed some things to cut the cost back. One of the things that um, was talked about was um, was doing some facade work uh, with some stone, and that came back at an exorbitant price. And so, um, Ted changed it to some tin, which is substantially cheaper. The biggest thing about the roof is that right now it's a flat roof and we have to put an incline on it. So there are some structural changes. I think that's where the cost is being driven up because you, you don't want to put another flat roof on there. That's part of the problem is the water's just sitting on the roof and causing, you know, leaking and other problems, uh, other damage. So in order, if we're going to replace the roof, we need to do it properly and put enough slant on it so that it drains properly and that's where the cost is being driven up although Ted said his original estimate was like 204,000 so where it got reduced by essentially $55,000 I'm not really sure I mean I realize that's not the whole cost of it but again that 204,000 was given what two years ago so I know that at least from what I've found, um, 
the previous finance director did have sort of a capital projects list started when I walked into my position and part of that included all of this library stuff and that was what was allocated in her records and you know Kent took a look at it and it stayed that way so I'm not sure what happened previous but I know in what I had found it was the hundred and fifty thousand but I think it is worth noting that there was a whole library kind of improvement plan and in that that's still kind of hanging mm -hmm. on the capital budget projects list is another two hundred thirty seven thousand dollars worth of improvements so something else to consider that there is more work to be done and it's a pretty substantial amount of money for projects so but essentially the roof is leaking right now and needs to be not only replaced but altered <coughs> structurally to make it be right I, I wonder if it would be possible to um, do it in s sections I mean like do two-thirds or half of it uh, I would say probably not because you're going to alter it structurally. Yeah. Yeah. And they would probably they would probably charge you more because they're going to have to mobilize more than once. Usually, mobilization is a is a good part of of a project like this. So. So there is money in the facilities improvement fund, but it would pretty much drain it. So um, it's just something to consider. I mean, if, if council wants to wait until the next meeting, Ted is out of town right now. That's why he couldn't be here tonight. I can ask him to come to the next meeting. I know that, that they're chomping at the bit to get it done because of the weather that's coming. Mm -hmm. But um, And I did talk to uh, Connie at the library. She was going to talk to the friends of the library to see if there was anything that they could contribute. She didn't have high hopes that it would be much more than 10000 if that. So she, uh, you know, of <coughs> course didn't want to commit because it's not her decision. Um, I, I guess I'd like to know if we say yes to this, mm -hmm. to draining the capital improvement fund, mm -hmm. then what are we by implication saying no to? Is that something we can look at? Well, I mean, any capital improvements. I mean, but are, is there anything you know, in the pipeline, or we want to have in the big one. Yeah. The farm is the big one. The farm building. And any future library improvements if those were to happen as well? Because that was com budgeted for coming out of there. I'm concerned about the farm because of, you know, how are these guys, without drawings, how are these guys going to price the site work? How are they going to price the excavating? How are they going to price the concrete? Um, I mean, it's one thing to price a building right. that sits there. That's pretty easy. That's what they do every day. Right. But it's it's the excavation. It's the site work. That's where the money's going to come. Right. And that's the, and I have and similar concerns. And that's why I said we may have to reject the bids anyway. I guess I I'd, I'd like to hear from Ted when he comes back because you know I you know we spend a lot of time on on that before we decided on the amount of Kent and so forth and it and I mean to I can see missing it by a couple thousand but we missed it by almost a hundred thousand right and you know uh, right you know yeah and that was the lowest of the three bids mm -hmm. so um, I can certainly ask Ted to come to the next meeting I don't think that he would have a problem with doing that at all and the Sutton Farm thing we need to do because it costs us money to have our this ex the ex expensive equipment sitting outside it just wears it down and um, so that is a really a pretty priority project because it's it's an investment in <coughs> in capital so we are in a bit of a pickle well um, I can ask I, let me ask Ted to come to the next meeting um, to talk about the library I will go look at Sutton Farm um, <coughs> and see if I can come up with any alternatives. Um, Jason and I looked at it once, but it, we can look again just to see if we have any other alternatives to housing the equipment that's still outside. Is there, um, I mean, we it's a it's still a fairly low in, low interest environment. Did we talk about possible debt financing? And you said that would not work. Oh no, I, I had actually said that, that 
on the really the only way to do it yeah on the farm building like that. yeah right. that's really the only way to do the farm building okay I think the other thing that that is making it more problematic is that I think when we were first approaching the project it was going to be a joint project with the electric department so that maybe a third of the money could come out of the electric department but I guess um, Johnny doesn't need the space I mean so it is just streets um, equipment it is so you know that's the that's the fun that's completely funded. where is Johnny's equipment gonna be he he has room for all of his all he needs to do is put one more garage door on and paint his building and he's got essentially a, so his stuff isn't even out at Sutton Farm or it's, it's out at Sutton Farm but it's in one of the buildings already he has cleaned some things up and gotten rid of some surplus equipment mm -hmm. that were things that we didn't have any need for mm -hmm. and so he's found room for his his equipment and all the transformers and things <coughs> the transformers are outside but, there, but that's okay to be yes there. Okay. yeah that's fine so well would it make sense to instead of having his stuff over there I mean obviously I don't know <coughs> the configuration but to to put instead of electric in the spaces that he's cleared out let have him upgrade and put some of the stuff from water and sewer over in his building or will those equipment not fit in there I don't, I don't think it's going to fit because yeah. it's, cause it's, it's <coughs> I, I know the two pieces that he put in, mm -hmm. I mean, they t take up this whole, right, yeah. this whole building with no no room just to basically get in and pull them out. So no, I mean, instead of having a, them there, put them over in the new building when it comes up and then transfer everything, tra transfer some of the... Oh, no, Jason's, because uh, we got that big vac truck. Well, I mean, the, the lift trucks, Johnny's lift trucks are probably some of the most expensive pieces of equipment we have anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Beaver device is installed and hopefully working at one end of Sutton Farm. The problem is now the, build, the beavers are building the dams at the other end, and but that's on private property. They basically. actually did. And, and so um, we're working. Marianne is going to talk to the property owners out there to see if they'd be willing to <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it turns out that I think one of the people who uh, likely will be on the Environmental Commission is an environmental engineer and lives at Thistle Creek. Okay. And so I was talking to Jason about I think that 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 can be a good linkage to right. work on that piece of it. So hopefully we'll get that resolved. Um, the Sutton Farm RFQ was extended to October the 20th. Um, we'll have to wait and see what comes in on that and, and how that uh, how that specs out. Don't forget that the three finalists in the water plant consulting process will be here on October 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, to start their presentations. They're allotted uh, 15 to 20 minutes apiece and then 15 to 20 for discussion for council afterward, uh, then a quick break for them to switch out. Um, you have in your packets this, which is a color-coded timeline of the projects. Um, there is some leeway in, in these projects. Um, specifically, if you look at the, the placement of the curb, replacement of the curb ramps, which is the CDD, CDBG project through the county, um, that project on the timeline actually has 11 days. It should only take about seven, but we wanted to give a little bit extra time. And then one of the concerns was um, the streetscape project and how that would fit in. Uh, between the events that we have going on in town and, and the holidays that are coming up. That project is actually slated to take about three weeks um, and there are 25 days allotted. That's a little bit closer but given the fact that that same company is finished up, finishing up Limestone, finishing up uh, Cemetery Street and then has the there are two crews working in town right now they have the little bit of leeway on the ramps that's all the same company that's doing streetscape he, he got all those bids um, so my thought is that everything is going to be done by Thanksgiving um, the one caveat is that uh, Durst Brothers has asked to work on streetscape during the nighttime hours of 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. 
The reason that he wants to do that is, uh, number one, because of less vehicular and foot traffic, and number two, he <coughs> intends to have um, walkways so that the businesses can remain open during the day. And he will make it uh, accessible for people to get in and out of the businesses during the day. Um, there are two, uh, I believe, two buildings there that have residents over the top of the businesses. But um, other than that, it's two. So what are council's thoughts on? I think that sounds great. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Um, and the other, the only other project on there is the Gaunt Park ball fields, and that's about a, a five to seven day project is supposed to go the third week of this month. Um, I do have two things that aren't um, on there. Number one, I spoke to a, a couples group Friday night. Um, it was really kind of fun, although they kept me in town until nine o'clock and then they had to let me go so I could go home for the weekend. Um, but um, it was a group of very astute folks. Mr. Graham was one of them. Um, and it was very enjoyable. Um, they ask about the, the village and the various goings on and um, the, these, these folks are a force to be reckoned with. So, um, and the other thing I would like to remind everyone that uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So please show your support by wearing a pink ribbon. It is also Family Violence Awareness Month. So that's what the purple pin is. Thank you. And that's it. Any questions for Patty? Judy? All right. I have recently been taking some personal time off, so I've had some shortened work days, and this is likely to keep on for a few more weeks. So I'm just going to go ahead and shorten those hours through October. So at 832, exclusive of meetings, which I will be here for. Um, and I am really more pleased than you can imagine that our <laughs> recently updated RC2 was approved by the Ohio Historical Society and finance is ready to proceed with destruction of obsolete records and um, a hire has been made of Dorothy Smith who brings a wealth of experience in public records and records management to the task. So this has taken a <laughs> honk and a long time and I would like to thank Babette O'Reilly, Denise Swinger and village staff as a whole for bearing with this very lengthy process. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And, and the money that will pay that part-time person is the $5,000 that council set aside for records inventory slash destruction this year. Um, and so we're preparing for next year, putting in place a, a regular process to do this once a year. And, and how will the records be destroyed? I mean, are, <laughs> if it was up to me, <laughs> there would be a large bonfire. Shredder, yeah, shredder, shredder. Shredder's coming yeah. in. Somebody's coming yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, thank you. Um, so, future agenda items. Um, first, I mean, just again, October 27th, we have on here the October 27th. And Brian, reiterate again the date of the um, October. Public October 23rd, okay. forum on uh, local policing. Is that 7 o'clock also? Yeah. Yes, 7 to 8.30. Um, so we've got a resolution. Um, I don't know when that will be for the new water plant, um, if that will be, you know, maybe in November. Uh, yeah, council will have to, we'll have the uh, special meeting on the 27th, and then council can make a decision at the next right. regular meeting. Okay. Uh, budget session, <clears throat> the next one, um, enterprise and special revenue funds and capital budget, that will be at the uh, October 20th meeting, again starting at 6 p.m. We have a budget workshop on November 3rd at 6 p.m. And then we'll finish the entire budget review on November 17th at 6 p.m. Those are the regular meetings, um, just starting at 6. Um, so it looks like at this point, we have what it, the we have the EC the Environmental Commission ordinance that will be coming to the next meeting, and also I, I would hope to be able to bring a list of candidates for the okay. Environmental Commission at the next meeting to be approved, and this is also um, the meeting where we report out on our commissions, mm -hmm. and you are inviting. Uh, Ted Donnell here to, to discuss the right. roof. Do you Library want that roof. during the budget session or do you want that regular session? It seems like regular session. Mm -hmm. Old business. Yeah, old business. Bed, bed tax? Oh, um, seems 
a little early for that, but I don't know. If I mean, I think we should put it on this list, but I don't think it has to be in the next meeting. Maybe some hospitality tax. Yeah, is it or tax? lodging or hospitality? Well, hospitality tax, mm -hmm. um, like in December, or do you think before that? I can bring some draft legislation and you can look at it and then you don't have to pass it. You can just right. bring it for review. Bring it for review as an as a mm -hmm. item of new business. Would you want that? Would you want to do I'll that? do it next time. Okay. Uh, do council members want an update after the October 18th meeting that we're having about the local policing forum? That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got a report out anyway. Okay. HR, you know what I mean? So That's true. You have I mean, it, it's technically part of HRC, yeah. Okay. If it feels like you want to um, say something more, it, we, we were going to even try to always be have our, have our reports in writing, which I've been the worst at doing. So <laughs> um, if you felt like you wanted to write something up, then we could always move it up if it felt okay. like we needed it. It's a good idea. I can do that. So it, it's going to be a pretty light agenda. I mean, is there anything that we, um, we are starting at six, but it's going to be a light agenda. I mean, do we want to consider not starting at six? Do we want to just consider starting the meeting at seven? Because it, it's kind of nice I, to get done early too. Yeah, I yeah, that's. I'd, I'd almost be hesitant to do that just okay. because but then if so get into yeah, I mean, so we'll, we'll end up with at least a two-hour yeah. meeting. I think so. it's only me who's often had a little trouble getting here at six, but right now it, it okay. doesn't seem to be. Okay, so we'll keep it at problem. six. If we're done at eight thirty, we'll be happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other anything else for the next agenda? Just so we're prepared for agenda planning. Nope. Okay. Um, I will um, uh, take a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of real estate. Mm -hmm. so moved. Second. Judy, would you call the roll, please? Yeah, Wintrow. Yes. Aspen. Yep. Sims. Yes. Osh. Yes. McQueen. Yes. And there will not be any decisions coming out of this executive session. And you're not. Wintrow. There's no. So we'll serve by phone or no, so, no. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for staying.